This video is about inverse proportion. If you haven't watched the previous two videos on direct proportion, you may like to just to get up to speed to the general uh, methods that we are going to use in this video. I'd like you to think about a rectangle whose area is 40 centimetres squared. I'd like you to try and think of heights and widths for that rectangle. Could you come up with pairs of numbers that could make an area of 40 centimetres squared. I hope that you can see that 1 and 40 would make an area of 40, 2 and 20, 4 and 10. The key thing to make an area of 40 is that your numbers have to multiply to make 40. These two variables, x and y, are now in what we call inverse proportion. They vary inversely with each other. And all this means is that when you multiply them, you make a constant number, 40. Here's another example using a different rectangle. Let's say that the area has to be 36 centimetres squared. Let's use the letters A and B. What could A and B be as pairs? Well, if I had 1 times 36, that would work. If I had 2 times 18, that would work. 3 times 12, that would work. So these pairs of numbers, A and B, again, are in inverse proportion. When you multiply them together, they make a constant number. We don't normally use a formula in this format when we're describing inverse proportion. The way I'm going to do it throughout this video is actually I'm going to put this number, divide by b, in effect. And I'm going to write a formula that looks like that every single time. We've just seen in the last two examples that the number here, this 36 or 40 as it was in the previous example, can change. But it's normally a fixed number. It needs to be a fixed number uh, in order for us to say that these two variables are inversely proportional. So we normally call this number here k. And if you've been watching the videos on direct proportion, you'll know that that is called the constant of proportionality. So a more general formula for inverse proportion will be that. And that is our starting point for every inverse proportion question that we're going to do today. Here's the first question. It says, while doing underwater tests in one part of an ocean, a team of scientists noticed the temperature was inversely proportional to the depth in metres. When the temperature was 6 degrees, the scientists were at a depth of 4 kilometres. So, first thing to notice, the words inverse proportional, inversely proportional. What this means is that we can start from that formula that I just said. Okay, A equals K over B. But I'm not going to use A, I'm going to use T for temperature and D for depth. So it's important that you identify your two variables, the two things that are going to change in this formula. T, the temperature, and the depth, D. Now our first job, before we can answer parts A and B, is to actually work out the value of K, to actually work out what this formula is that links these two variables. So to do that we need to use the 6 degrees centigrade, which is the temperature, and we need to use the 4 kilometres, which is the depth. So I substitute both of those numbers into my formula. There they are. T has turned into a 6 and the D has turned into a 4. And now I've got a little formula, a little equation for working out the value of K. All I need to do is multiply this by 4, and I will get k equals 6 times 4, 
and 6 times 4 is 24. So the final step before I can start part A is to actually write my formula out using that value of k. So I'm copying the top box here, t equals the value of k I'm going to replace and a d on the bottom there. So now I've got my formula, I can go ahead and answer parts A and B. So part A, what would the temperature be at a depth of 8 kilometres? Remember, I've just worked out that the temperature is equal to 24 divided by the depth. So for part A, the temperature is 24 divided by the depth, which is 8 kilometres. Let's just move that up a bit so we're not distracted. What would the temperature have been at a depth of 8 kilometres? So I'm replacing that D with an 8 in my formula, and that gives me 3 degrees centigrade. 24 divided by 8 makes 3. For part B, I've got to do what depth would they have to go to find a temperature of 2 degrees. So this time I'm replacing the T in my formula with the 2 the 24 remains the same, that's my constant of proportionality, and the D is what I'm going to try and find. Now when you see something like this, there's a very quick thing you can do, which is to switch over the 2 and the D. Um, but I'm just going to show you why algebraically that works. What you need to do is multiply both sides of this equation now by D, and then divide both sides of the equation by 2 and you can see the effect there is that the D and the 2 have swapped places. They were like this and now they've swapped places here. That's 12 and just have a look in the question distance or depth is measured in kilometres. Okay let's have a look at this question now. A new engine is being tested but it had serious problems. The distance it went in kilometres without breaking down was inversely proportional to the square of its speed. So when we're doing this, we have to look. First of all, we've got the inverse proportion. So we know it's going to be equals k over something. Right? Let's try and find out what that formula is going to be. What's my first variable? Well, it says the distance it went without breaking down. So let's call that d. And the square of its speed means I'm going to use the symbol S for speed, and it's squared. So this is my starting point. Now what I'm going to do is just try and plug in two numbers from the question. I know that when the speed is 12, the engine lasted 3 kilometres. So the distance is 3 kilometres when the speed was 12. So all I've done there is substituted 3 and 12 in. Once again, I can work out the value of k from that point. I'm just going to work out that 12 squared is 144. And then I need to do 3 times 144 to work out my value of k. That's 432. So, final step before I can answer the questions A and B is to actually write my formula out again. Remember, it was D equals K over S squared. OK, so let's just have a quick look at that process again. It's just the same as with direct proportion. Start with your general formula, plug in a pair of numbers, work out the value of K, and then use your formula to answer the questions. What were the questions? Well, let's go back to those questions. Zoom in a little bit. OK, we have the formula, which I've just worked out, is D equals 432 over S squared. Like that. And now we're going to have a go at part A. Find the distance covered before a breakdown when the speed is 15 metres per second. Let's just zoom in and make sure you can see that. Okay, 
when the speed is 15 meters per second. So for part A, I need to use my formula, but I need to put 15 as my speed, like that. So that's 432 divided by 225, which makes 1.92 kilometers. For part B, it says on one test, the engine broke down after 6.75 kilometers. What was the speed? So now we need to replace the D in the formula with our 6.75, and we're going to work out what the S squared is equal to. So again, I've just replaced the D with 6.75. The S squared, I've left where it is because that's what I'm going to work out. Let's do the swap over there, and we've got S squared equals 432 over 6.75, just like that, okay. Work out what that is, 432 divided by 6.75 is 64, and then you have to remember that this is S squared makes 64, so your final act to work out S is to actually square root 64, which gives you 8, and the speed is meters per second. So the process there, once again, work out your value of k, make sure you've got your formula with your value of k included in it, and then you can use your formula to work out different values.